fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Beacon City. Well, Silver, come on. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached the town of Beacon City in the heart of the cattle country, they saw a strange sight. Thousands of sheets of paper tossed on the breeze came toward them like a snowstorm. The masked man wheeled Silver to one side and snatched one of the large squares out of the air. Right up, Tonto. See what this is. Oh, there's Silver. Oh, steady, fella. Oh, steady, fella. Steady. What's steady. happening, Beacon City? The whole edition of Bob Turner's newspaper seems to be flying around in the wind. Um, that newspaper? Yes. This is the front page of the Beacon City Star. Uh, we know Bob Turner. Meet him long time ago. He's one of the most honest pioneers in this part of the country. I wonder if... Hello. Uh, what matter? This paper has an editorial on the front page. Turner has fired both barrels. Uh, what him say? The third sheriff has been killed since the first of the year, shot in the back. Turner's demanding that the people organize and throw out the crooks that are trying to run Beacon City. And that's why paper fly free on wind. It looks as if something has happened. Come on, Tonto, let's find out. Get him up, scout. Go on, Silver. <laughs> The office of the Beacon City Star was one of wild disorder as Ace Wills and two rough companions swung heavy axes right and left. The big glass window had been shattered and the jagged bits of glass were strewn about the floor and furniture. Three men in the place held heavy axes and with these they concentrated upon the destruction of everything the office held. The valuable printing press which had been brought from the east at great expense was already broken beyond repair. But one of the men continued to smash the broken parts to increase the ruin. Chairs, tables and other pieces of furniture were being smashed into kindling wood. The large filing cabinets of letters were smashed open and the contents were scattered. Will saw the neatly arranged type and rose against one wall. He shouted, Spill that case of type! Shove it over so it's all mixed up! That's it! Now rip up a supply of paper! We'll fix it so he won't print a newspaper again for a long time. There's a type all mixed up for plenty. Now smash this your cabinet while I'm at it. What's going on in Get here? that mask, man! Lone Ranger and Tonto charged. Tonto drove a hard fist to the face of the first man, sent him sprawling across the floor. The masked man dodged a blow by Wills and jabbed the leader in the stomach. The third of the wreckers landed a blow on the back of the Lone Ranger's head that stunned him momentarily. But Tonto knocked Bleak to one side long enough for the Lone Ranger to regain his balance. From the floor, Bleak drew his gun. He was just about to fire when the Lone Ranger whirled, snatched his own gun from his holster. 
My hand, my hand. No more gunplay. Oh, no, 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 wait. Don't hit me again. Get on your feet. Oh, my hand, my hand is broken. You hit the wall and you missed me. Get up. Give me my hand, Toto. Uh, let me lift you. Oh, you needn't drag me up by my hair. Keep an eye on those others while I talk to this one, Toto. Now, wait. You've got no right. I know you. Your ace wills. You're in the cafe. Well, what of it? I saw the last copy of the Beacon City Star. You didn't like it. Look here, stranger. We can handle things in Beacon City without your interference. I don't like the way you handle them. Now, where's Bob Turner? None of your business. And you'll pay for hitting me. Where's Turner? I said it was you none of your... No, oh, let go of me. He's home. Home at his house. Where is his house? <laughs> About a half mile to the south. White house with the green shutters. Well, you're going to settle for the damage you've done here as soon as Turner figures the cost of putting the newspaper back in business. If you've injured Turner, you're also going to pay for that. Yeah? Well, we'll see who does the paying. Take your friends and get out. Huh? I'll get square with you. Get out. All right, all right. I'm and going. you go, too. I'm going, but I'll get square for that busted hand. You two just wait. Now, don't turn your back to the windows, Tonto. Those dogs will shoot you in the back. That's right. They certainly made a mess of this newspaper office. Uh. I wonder if the press can be repaired. Badly smashed. Uh, this happened because Turner tell truth. Turner, we've got to get to his house and see if he's hurt. Come along, Tonto. First man that's ever dared fight with Ace Wills. Ace, get him. I hate to be in their shoes. I hate to be in their shoes. Hey, hey, better get out of here, fellas. The folks don't do them things to Ace Wills. All right, mount up, Tonto. Uh, big fella. Here we go, see Turner. Yes, but we'll keep our horses with us. Come on, boy. <laughs> Lone Ranger remembered Tom Turner from an earlier acquaintance. He knew that the publisher was utterly fearless, daring, and determined. He knew that he was a firm believer in the freedom of the press and the fact that lawlessness must be stamped out. He knew that Turner must be badly beaten by the hoodlums and realized that the destruction of the newspaper would be a far greater blow than any physical damage that might have been done. His one hope was that Turner was still willing to fight. As he and Tonto reined up in front of the house... Hear what crowds say. Yes, they seem to think that Wills can do whatever he wants to. Uh, it's a bad situation for any town. I hope Turner's not hurt. Uh, nobody near his house. No, after this, I don't suppose anyone will dare be seen talking to him. Oh, fella, steady. Oh, <laughs> I know. You better stay here with the horses. Uh, me keep close watch. Keep a sharp watch with a solid wall behind your back. Oh, masked man, do come in. How's Bob? He. He's licked. He's in the next room. You are his wife? Yes, I'm Mary Turner. Bob saw you ride up to the office and go in. Then he saw Willis and his friends come out. Bob. He's done it. He's finished me. Here, let me take a look at you. Hmm. The bad bruise on your head. Oh, it's nothing. I don't mind that. It's my newspaper. How, how badly is the office wrecked? Well, it's... Going to take a lot of work and a lot of money to get your paper going again. I can't do it. Willis won't let me. I'm through. You're not through, Turner. Uh, what's the use? When a gang of crooked cutthroats can do what Wills and his friends have done to a town, there's no place for an honest man. And we've got to make a place. Now, uh, you've made the start. We'll go on from there. I, uh, I saw you. Yes, Mary said you did. You'll have to get out of town, friend. They'll shoot you the same as they did those three shares. I won't turn my back to them. Now, uh, look here, Bob. There must be some honest men in Beacon City. Sure there are. Most of them are honest. But they can't fight a gang like Wills has. Wills wouldn't have a gang of outlaws. That is, uh, unless he used them for something. What's his game? Cattle wrestling. Oh? Beacon City's a stopover place on the trail to the north country. Wills gets friendly with the herd drivers that come into the cafe. He learns where cattle are being moved. Then his men go and get the Longhorns. Where do they take the stolen cattle? Well, nobody knows except the gang. I see. They've got a hideout somewhere, but there's no telling where it is. Uh, there's no use. You can't do anything. Wills is too strong. You'll only get killed for trying. And we'll see. Bob, uh, who is the sheriff now? Well... Will's appointed an old galoot called Tumbleweed. Yes, he'll do anything Will's tells him. Not worth a hoot. I see. 
Uh, where can I find him? <laughs> well, if he's not sprawled over a table in the cafe, he'll be in his office. All right, and that'll be my first stop. Oh, but wait, you can't. Bob, uh, Bob, can you round up the honest men quietly and secretly? I might be able to, but... Uh, you know who they are? I guess so. Well, then get them ready for a fight. Uh, can you count on them to fight? If there's anything to fight for. Uh, say, a decent town, a place to live in peace with their families? They'd fight for it and fight hard if there was any chance of winning. Get them together. Tell them that there is a chance of winning. But what are you going to do? I, uh, I'm going to call on the sheriff. And I'm going to make a few arrests. That evening, found Will still raging over the manner in which the masked man had handled him. In his cafe, he found it hard to mask his feelings with a fixed smile and a congenial manner. One of his men whispered to him, and he sauntered to a table where a white-haired man was seated. Well, stranger, they tell me you're driving your herd north. I reckon they told you right. My name is Wills. This is my place here. Well, it's first rate. I always make it a practice to stand treat for a man that's handling cattle. I figure... A man thinks enough of my place to stop off overnight, well, the least I can do is buy a drink. Now, that's downright nice of you, Mr. Will. Help yourself. From now on, it's on the house. <laughs> well, this is something first rate. <laughs> uh, handling a big herd? 1,200 head. Well, that takes some handling. Yep, sure does. Well, here's how. Drink up. <coughs> you, uh... You want to be careful. There's been a pack of outlaws operating around here. Well, we're watching out. The last time a herd was put through Eagle Pass, it was raided. That's a bad piece of land there. It is, eh? Huh? Yes. You can't see what's hidden on the rocks on the side of the pass. Your men could be picked off before they could fire a shot. Mm, that's something to know. Well, I thought I'd better tell you, as long as you're strange in this country. We're trying to prevent any more cattle robberies. It, uh... Gives the section a bad name. Well, thanks, Mr. Wills, for telling me. You can skirt Eagle Pass if you want to. That'd be a good idea. Is your cattle grazing now? Yeah. Now, if you haven't put it to graze too far from here, why, well, uh, I can show you how to avoid Eagle Pass. Tain't so far, only about seven miles east on the range. How many men have you? I got about a dozen. Mm -hmm. Well, just a minute, I'll get a pencil and paper and show you how to avoid the pass. That'd be right friendly of you, Mr. Yeah. Wills. <laughs> Excuse me for a yeah. minute. <laughs> Eight. Twelve hundred ahead. Seven miles east. It's on the range with about a dozen men. I savvy. You know what to do. I'll get the boys together and take care of that cattle tonight. You can depend on me, boss. So long. <laughs> hey, Mr. Wills! Mr. Wills! Hey, yeah, what's the matter, Tumbleweed? No, it's the deputy. It's the deputy sheriff. What? I just got away to get here. He come into my office a while ago wearing a mask. Mask? Leak, you hear that? Yeah, I hear. Go on, Tumbleweed. What did he do? Well, he made me swear him in as a deputy and give him a badge. I didn't have no choice. I had to do it, mask and all. Well, we've been looking all over for him. Look here, Tom. No, 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 let me go, Mr. Wills. I couldn't help myself. And I think you need a deputy. I'll tell you who to appoint. I know, he but... He couldn't help it. Oh, no, I couldn't, honest, yeah. I couldn't. I don't know why he wants the badge, but then he wanted it. Hey, boss, there he is, the masked man. Here? There's the critter. All right, you're all covered. Now get him. Go oh, oh, on, that's... Leave your guns where they are, or someone will get hurt. He's got a dozen men with him. I'm backed by men of this town who want to see law and order. In the name of the law, we're putting Wills, Bleak, and Jake Hastings under arrest. Are you crazy? Well, there's the crazy man among us, Wills. Oh, you haven't had enough yet. Well, turn it the next time you... you have anything to say, Wills, you can say it in court. Take their guns away. Well, you won't keep me in jail long. And when I'm out... This town will be too small for you and every man that's with you. Remember, Weed, we'll take the job of guarding these three. But, but, but... Ah, I... hold on. Just what am I arrested for? You needn't ask that, Wills. The three of you wrecked the newspaper office. There's a law against that sort of thing. And that law applies to you the same as it would to anyone else. Now, get going. All right. <laughs> the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story... Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. 
Ace Wills and one of his friends were in the small stone jail, and Bleak, the other henchman, was in the cell adjoining the sheriff's office. After his fury subsided, the cold logic that was part of Wills' makeup became dominant. Take it easy, Jake. We'll be out of here in the morning. But the idea of it, that masked man making himself a deputy sheriff. I won't hold that against old Tumbleweed. He had to swear the masked man in. He had no choice. I know, but but of all things, you and Bleak and me charged with smashing up the newspaper office. Turner will think he got off mighty easy when he sees the next things that happened to him. Well, where's the rest of the gang? Why don't they come tear this jail apart? I sent Pete out to take him on a little job. Tonight? Yes. When Pete gets back in the morning, he'll hear about this. Then you bring the gang? Right. Well, why did they put the two of us here and bleak over in the sheriff's office? I don't know. How far away does the gang have to go to take care of this job? Not very far. Cattle job? Yeah. That old timer I saw you talking to in your cafe? Yeah. <laughs> He's got around 1,200 head in Grayson with around a dozen men to watch the herd. Pete and the boys won't have any trouble moving that livestock. They'll take care of it tonight. <laughs> They're probably taking care of it right now. <laughs> Pete and the gang of rustlers rode through the night toward an expansive plain where cattle grazed. There's the cattle, boys. See any of the riders? I don't see a sign of them. You know what to do when you do see them. Drill them. Right. Oh, we got to drive that stock to the usual hideout? That's right. Rain up. Rain up, boys. Whoa. Now what? Boys, we'll use the usual methods. Ride in hard with guns blazing, stampede that herd, drive them to the hideout. Lefty, Tim, Kenny, you ride wing on the north. The rest of us will take care of this side. Right. Anyone see any of the cow ends? No sight of them. Maybe they're on the other side of the critters. Well, maybe they figured the longhorns could take care of themselves and they went to town for the night. If you see anyone, let him have lead. Ready now? Right. Then let's get going. Get on there! <laughs> the band of outlaws charged at the herd with guns roaring. The outlaws were experts at starting a stampede. They knew exactly how to do it in a minimum of time. They charged the cattle, shouting wildly and firing their guns at close range. In almost no time, the peacefully grazing herd was transformed into a wild mass of frantic, half-crazed, fear-ridden beasts whose sharp hoofs pounded the ground in an increasing roar, trying to escape the men and guns they feared. The outlaws rode expertly, keeping pace with the charging waves of longhorns while guiding them toward the distant and well-hitting valley that had for some time been their headquarters. Hard riding by the thieves kept the mass of longhorns packed in close in the sides. The men who had been on guard were nowhere to be seen. They might have snuck off to town. Maybe they got scared and lit out. You won't complain for not fighting them. Oh, no, hey, keep them stampeding. Faster they go, the sooner we get to the hideout. Meantime, Turner and the Lone Ranger were in the sheriff's office with old Tumbleweed. I don't know what's to come of me after this. Mr. Wills is going to be mighty mad at me. Wills is in jail, Tumbleweed. As long as he's there, he can't hurt you. I know, Tumbleweed, but then... Wills and his men are going to pay for every bit of damage they've done to my printing press and newspaper office. Now, look, Turner, you know we won't never do that. You know how Wills has got this town in the palm of his hand. What'll happen? Well, I'll tell you. In the morning, his men will hear about this. Maybe we'll jail his men. Yeah, but what's the charge? You can't prove anything against them. We'll see. Well, they'll get wheels out, and even if they don't, he'll go free when he goes on trial. What if he does have to pay a fine? <laughs> he'll pay it, then he'll start in to get it right back. Tumbleweed, you know as well as I do that his gang steals cattle. Oh, Dad ratted all, Turner. No one's one thing and proving it's another. You can't just say a man's a thief. you got to prove it. And there's no proof. Turner, we'll clear out and let Tumbleweed think it over. All right, whatever you say. Oh, now look here. Won't you please give me back that deputy badge and get clear of uh, Bacon City? When I'm finished here. Oh, my finish is going to come a long time before that. Keep an eye on your prisoner, Tumbleweed. If he gets out, we'll hold you responsible. Oh, what am I into? Why did I ever take this job of sheriff? Hey, deputy, you with the mask. Well? Look, there's room in the regular jail for three men. Why can't you put Bleak in with Ace and Jake? Why leave them here where I got to guard them? It'd be too crowded with three of them in one cell. 
You'll be around in a couple of hours, Tumbleweed, and take your place on guard so you can get some sleep. But, but, but oh, my sake's alive. You wait, Tumbleweed. Now, Bleak, you leave me be. Maybe if you unlock this barred door, I'll talk east and they'll let you stay alive. I won't listen to it. I ain't stop talking to me. We're going to get out anyway, Tumbleweed. You know that, don't you? I don't know a thing. You keep me here and you'll be sorry for it. Hey, Ricky, you know what'll happen to you. I won't listen to you. I'm hanged if I'll listen. What can Turner that mask man do if you let me out? Nothing. You can tell them I escaped. They won't shoot you for it. But you keep me here and you'll be shot sure as my name is Bleak. Stop talking, I tell you. Now stop it. <laughs> Why don't you try and make me stop? You're licked, Tumbleweed. You know that. Huh. Oh, so we've got company. Well, what do you want? I don't know as you know me. I'm sort of a stranger in town. What do you want here? Uh, nothing, Mr. Sheriff. I've just sent over some hot coffee for you. Yeah, I reckon it'll taste real good. Well, no, it sure will. It sure enough will. I was coming this way, and they asked me to fetch it to you. Huh. I've got a herd of cattle near town that I'm a-taking north. I... <laughs> That'll hold you. That was done neat. Hey. Who are you? I'm just following orders, that's all. I saw you talking to Wills in the cafe. That's right. Mr. Wills was right fine to me. He warned me about outlaws nearby. I reckon the masked man was in with him, huh? Eh? Yeah, yeah, sure. Anyhow, when I heard that Mr. Wills was jailed, I figured I'd help him out. Now, just a second, I'll have this here door unlocked. You won't be sorry for this. I got the keys here. One second now, I have to find the right one. You're to get to the hideout as fast as you can. Hideout? Yep, your horse is saddled and waiting out in back of this building. What about Wills and Jake? I was told to send you to the hideout as fast as you can get there. That's all I know. All right. Uh, there you are. Better get your gun and travel fast. All right. This is my gun and belt right here on the desk. I'll stay here and make sure the sheriff stays the way he is. If he starts showing any signs of getting conscious, wrap him on the head again. As soon as he left the sheriff's office, Bleak headed north to the hills. A narrow pass between sheer walls led into a wide, well-watered valley. Countless steers could be seen in the moonlight. And at one side, there was a low house in which lanterns burned. Bleak joined the gang in the house. Bleak, where'd you come from? From the sheriff's office. I've been locked up there. Locked up? Yeah. Where's Wilson Jake? Are they here? No, the last I saw of Easy was in his cafe. He gave me orders. What is you locked up for? Uh, that old fool sheriff. Tumbleweed? Yeah. He appointed a new deputy. A man with his face mask. He was working with Turner. And he came into the cafe with a dozen or more men from town. They jugged the three of us for wrecking the newspaper office. You mean the boss is in jail? That's what I'm saying. But I thought he got out by this time. Not that we know of. We just got here with a new lot of cattle. How did you get out? An old cowman came and cracked Tumbleweed on the head. Then let you out? Yeah. I was told to get here fast, so I came. Who was the cow man? I don't know. He said he had a lot of cattle. He was moving north. I saw him talking to Wills in the cafe. Wills warned about outlaws around Hold here. Hold on. I wonder if he's the owner of the critters we just brought in. You mean it's White you... mustache and hair? That's the man. Hang it all. There's something mighty funny about this. Why did he let you go free? Well, Pete... He didn't know his cattle was to be stole. No, but... Uh, hey, look! Don't reach for guns! Mass man! No! Uh, the rest of you get to Lone. Lone Ranger's in charge here. Lone Ranger? Bleak, you fool. They let you out so you'd show them where the hideout was. As a matter of fact, you were allowed to steal the cattle so you'd bring it here. Come in, Lodge. Thought I was on your side, didn't you, Bleak? You! The ornery two-horned polecat. Didn't you rustlers think it was mighty odd there weren't no guards on those longhorns? So that's it. Frame. I didn't knock old Tumbleweed out, Bleak. In fact, he's right here with us. Right here and coming inside and speak for myself. Hey, you thought I'd count out Ace Wills like every other snake in town. Thought I was too old and worthless to be a good sheriff. Well, I'm going to be the sheriff that cleaned out the crooks in Beacon City. You, you mean you talked about cows to Wills knowing he'd have us get them? The Lone Ranger hoped he'd make a play for him. When Wills did so, that proved he was in with all you crooks. And while you crooks was busy stealing my friend's cattle... My deputy sheriff led the arrest of Ace Wills and his two sidekicks. Turner, we'll probably find a lot of cattle that's been stolen from other ranches. You will. You sure will. There's three times as many head here in this valley as I had. Well, we'll check the brands and notify the owners. Now, wait. Look here. Tumbleweed, maybe we can... Uh, chow to my hands, Bleak. That man with the mask is my deputy and he's in charge. You won't need me anymore, Tumbleweed. I think Bob Turner and the honest men in town will back you from now on. We sure will. With Wills in jail and his gang smashed, the honest men will have a chance to say a few things. Now, wait. 
Great day, don't you resign as deputy till we can find a jail big enough to hold this pack of crooks. You won't need a jail. No, of course you won't. Tumbleweed, we'll just give back the cattle and move away from here. That'll be all right, won't it? Well, I don't know how I can stop you. I got no jail big enough. What about a deputy? It's out of our hands, Tumbleweed. Huh? I hear Tonto riding in. He'll have some men with him. <laughs> Here's where you cooks get the surprise of your life. What do you mean? Those critters are mine that you stole. I reckon you sure be sorry you stole that particular mess of Longhorns. How many men are stopping outside? Who all is there? Come in, Tonto. Uh, they come. Soldiers outside. Good. Bleak, that cattle had been sold to the army. You stole the property of the United States, and the troopers will take charge. Come in, soldiers. There you are. There's your prisoner. <laughs> it's the army prison for you. Won't they be surprised when he learns that he's a prisoner of Uncle Sam? <laughs> Here, Tumbleweed. Here's the deputy badge. Hold on, hold on. Stop that mass man. I got to talk him into staying as my deputy sheriff. He's worth a hundred regular deputies. Stop him. You won't need us now, Tumbleweed. Steady, big fella. <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>